This is the Locked On Jets podcast on this Sunday night. I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com, welcoming you as we recap a New York Jets victory. The Jets beat the Denver Broncos 31-21 to in Denver to improve their record to 2-3 and on the 2023 season. Look, they don't give style points in the NFL. You know, in college football, sometimes how you win matters because if you don't perform well against a really bad team, the voters knock you down in the standings. The NFL does not have style points. A win is a win, and the Jets had to get this win. So I'm not thrilled with a lot of aspects of the Jets' performance in this game, especially the coaching staff. And we'll get to that tomorrow when we do our full recap show. But at the end of, at the end of the day, the Jets had to leave this game with a victory. And now sitting at two and three, they're very much in the AFC race because the a the AFC is not the dominant conference many of us thought it would be at the beginning of the season. And it's a tough game next weekend against Philadelphia. I don't think the Jets are going to beat the Eagles. I think they'll probably fall to two and four. But you know something. Two and four with the remaining schedule that's not maybe not looking as that tough, or at least it's looking easier than the first six games of the season. I think the Jets have a chance to make some noise the back half of this season. You know, it's it's funny. I think things kind of even out in the NFL. Last week, Jets had a disaster first quarter, but the final 45 minutes of that game against Kansas City, they played some of their best football, but they did not win the game. And I think a lot of that had to do with the opponents. The Kansas City Chiefs are a great team. They're the defending Super Bowl champions. I think that the effort the Jets gave last week outside of the first quarter, good enough to beat, I don't know, maybe 29 of the 32 teams in the NFL. It just wasn't good enough to beat Kansas City. This week's kind of the opposite. Now, I want to give some credit to some people out there. We're going to talk to we're going to talk about Brees Hall in a bit, who is an absolute superstar. You can talk about the Jets' defense in the second half, clamping down on Kansas City, especially Quincy Williams, who Another guy who's a star. I mean, I, I try and be cautious with players who have a hot start to the season because sometimes they cool off. But after five weeks, I'm sold on Quincy Williams. He's an absolute star. Jets defense looking really good in the second half. Zach Wilson, an up and down day, but hit some clutch passes. Tyler Conklin making some clutch plays. How about that? Jets getting some production from the tight end position. Tyler Conklin. But I think on the whole, this was a pretty shaky performance by the New York Jets. And just as last week's effort, you know, probably beats 29 of the 32 teams, I think this week's performance by the Jets on the whole probably loses to somewhere around 29 of the 32 teams. It's just they happen to play one of those three teams that they could beat playing like this in the Denver Broncos because the Broncos are a really bad team. So, you know, it all evens out. You know, last week, it's not like the Jets get any bonus points for playing Kansas City tough. This week, it's not like the Jets really, you know, not, not, not like you, the Jets get docked a win for beating the Denver Broncos in a way that was you know, not all that inspiring on a lot of levels. Again, there were some very good performances. I don't want to make it act like the Jets. I don't want to act like the Jets did not deserve to win the game, but I don't think this performance is good because Denver was really bad. Denver's a really bad team, but I don't think this performance is good enough to beat a lot of teams, but you know what? It didn't matter. We can worry about that later. We'll worry about next week. Next week, the Jets had to get this win because if the Jets fell to one and four with a game against Philadelphia it would feel like the season was over because first of all, this would have been an emotionally devastating loss because you know, Denver's bad. When you started mapping out these games after Aaron Rodgers went down, you saw how badly the Denver Broncos were playing to go lose this game. It would be a crushing emotional blow because you'd say, we can't even beat these guys. How's the season going to move forward? But beyond that, it's different. I, I know it's only a one game difference, but there's a huge difference between starting two and four versus starting one and five. And again, I'm assuming the Jets lose next week. Maybe they surprise us, you know, any given Sunday in the NFL. But I feel like heading into next week, knowing that you've made it through the first six, at least two and four, that's just a totally different feeling from being one and five. Because if the Jets lost next week, if, if the Jets lost this game and lost next week to the Philadelphia Eagles, they'd be on a five game losing streak. And that's the point where you really start to feel the bottom fall out. That's the point where teams typically kind of, you maybe turn on each other. Sometimes you see them pack it in. Nobody's packing it in on the Jets. They grinded it out. Was it pretty? No. But you know something? I, I always say this in the NFL. An ugly loss is more beautiful. I'm sorry. An ugly win is more beautiful than a pretty loss. You know, that, that's what it comes down to. The Jets just had to figure out a way to end this game with more points on the scoreboard than the Denver Broncos. And they did it. And we're, listen, there's plenty to be concerned about going forward, especially the coaching staff. I mean, I thought the coaching staff was Denver's 12th man in this game. I, I, I'm really upset with some of the things I saw from Robert Sala and Nathaniel Hackett in this game. In fact, I love this game feeling like, you know what? I really like a lot of the players the Jets have on this team. I don't like the coaches right now. And we'll get to that. You know, we'll get to that on tomorrow's full recap show. But the most important takeaway for me, though, 
The Jets just got to win. They had to get this win. It doesn't matter how they got it. They got the win. We can worry about the rest later. We can worry about fixing what's wrong with this team later. This Jets team is still alive. And one of the big reasons they're still alive, their second year running back out of Iowa State, Brees Hall, on the field where he suffered a season-ending injury last year, delivered in a huge way. And we're going to give Brees credit as we continue this special Sunday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by LinkedIn. You know, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Of course, this offseason, Nathaniel Hackett was looking for a new job. The Jets hired him as offensive coordinator. I don't think the Jets use LinkedIn Jobs to fill their vacancy, but your small business might need a little bit more help than the Jets. It's easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs, then add, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience, so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And this is why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into the NFL action this season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. Believe it or not, the Jets were actually underdogs heading into this game. The Broncos had been one of the worst teams in the NFL all season long, but they were home favorites against the Jets by about two and a half points. Well, the Jets won this game outright by 10 points. Jets are going to be underdogs next weekend again against the Philadelphia Eagles. If you want to win some money and you believe in the Jets, there's no better time to join FanDuel to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, so you don't just have to bet on games. You can bet on player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Sunday evening. The Jets beat the Broncos 31-21 to in Denver. There were some pretty big performances by the Jets in this game. I listed some of them in our first segment tonight. I talked about the defense overall just playing an outstanding second half, giving the Broncos almost nothing except for one drive in the fourth quarter. Quincy Williams, a couple of huge plays on the final drive to help the Jets ice the game. Uh, Tyler Conklin, a guy who I am very critical of, really delivered for the Jets in this game. A couple of big-time receptions on third downs to extend drives, including a clutch one in the fourth quarter. Zach Wilson, an up-and-down game, but made the plays the Jets needed. But to me, the number one star in this game for the New York Jets was Brees Hall. I mean, look at the, the stat line. It's unbelievable. 22 carries, 177 yards, broke a 72-yard touchdown run in the second half. What more can you say about Brees Hall? And I'm sure this was an emotional game for Brees because last year, this was the field where he suffered a season-ending injury. And unfortunately for the Jets, last year there was another key offensive player who suffered a season-ending injury, Elijah Vera Tucker. And Vera Tucker left this game, and you know some of the early reports are not optimistic about him. Hopefully, uh, things turn out well for AVT. But Brees Hall returns to Denver. It's the first game where he's off the pitch count. We've been very critical of Nathaniel Hackett for limiting Brees' carries early in the season because even though I think Brees was on a pitch count the early part of this year, I don't think they needed to limit it as much as they did. And it felt like there were some games where they fell well below the pitch count threshold. Brees was the offense in this game. I think to, to some extent it was to the Jets' own detriment because I think Hackett leans too far into the run uh, at some points in the second half. But Brees Hall carried the Jets to victory. And after a first half where the where the offense was really not getting a whole lot done, he delivered. He's a big he's a big, big play threat, and there are not many running backs in the NFL who really make a difference. I mean, most most running backs in the NFL, and I'd say every other running back on this Jets roster, if you block four yards for them, they'll get four yards. If you block four yards for Brees Hall, he can take it seventy two yards. The speed, the size, there just aren't many backs like him. It was amazing to watch him play in this game. He lifted the Jets on his back. He carried them to a victory. So this game is all about Brees Hall. The second-year running back from Iowa State has kind of gone back to being the focal point on the Jets' offense. He did a great job keeping the Jets on schedule on early downs in the second half. Jets ended up getting three field goals in the second half. And again, I, I have some complaints about Nathaniel Hackett's play calling, maybe not going to play action a little bit more, maybe playing for those field goals. But Brees Hall dragged this offense into scoring range multiple times. On a day where Zach, well, you, you could feel like this game was on the verge of caving in on the Jets a couple of times, especially in the early part of the early, early stages of the game. 
And these are the types of games you've seen with Zach Wilson in the past where he gets off to a slow start and things kind of fall apart on him. I felt like Brees almost kind of gave Zach a breather. It kind of gave Zach a chance to reset within this game because the second half, Zach Wilson was better than the first half. I think a lot of that was due to the fact the Jets were able to play ahead for most of the second half because of the way Brees Hall ran because he broke that long touchdown run. Brees Hall's the offense, and Brees Hall is the guy again on offense. I don't think there's any question about that. And it's just so good to see him back, especially on a field where he suffered such a devastating injury a year ago. Anyway, that's all for our special Sunday night quick post-game recap edition of Locked on Jets. We'll be back tomorrow. This is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new, new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. So be sure to check us out. Until then, enjoy your Sunday night. Enjoy this victory. We'll be back tomorrow with our full Monday game recap.